Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a number theory problem, finding integer solutions to this radical equation. If you like this video, please comment, like, and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell button for notifications. If you don't like the video, please let me know why in the comment section down below. I appreciate all kinds of feedback. And let's get started. Now, we're going to be looking for integer solutions here. X and Y are integers. Uh, and we're going to be solving this equation. So what are we supposed to do? I'm going to in introduce two methods here. Okay. First method involves the isolation of one of the variables. So let's go ahead and start with that one. I'm going to isolate the square root of y here. So that's going to give me the square root of 250 minus the square root of x. And then obviously, this is a very obvious step, I think, for most people. Uh, I'm going to square both sides. So let's go ahead and do that next. If you square both sides, you're going to get rid of the radical on the left-hand side. It's going to be y. On the right-hand side, you're going to get rid of some of the radicals, but you also have some radicals. So when you square the first term, you're going to get 250. And then square the second one, you're going to get x minus, you're going to be getting 2 times square root of 250 multiplied by the square root of x, which you can definitely write as... 250x under the radical, okay? Now, but this can be simplified, obviously, because 250 uh, can be broken down. Uh, how do we break it down so that we have a common, you know, a perfect square? Uh, well, 25 is a perfect square, so I can definitely write it as 25 times 10. And the square root of 25 is going to be 5, so that will be multiplied by the 2. So from here, I should be getting something like 2 times 5, which is 10, times the square root of 10x. All right, awesome. So this is the equation that I have, y is by itself, no radicals. On the right-hand side, we do have a radical. Now, x and y are both integers, correct? Therefore, uh, this part here also needs to be an integer, 10 times that, which means this needs to be an integer as well. So square root of 10x is an integer, and it's only possible if x is equal to something like 10 times k squared, where k is an integer, okay? Now, why is that so? Because 10 is not a perfect square. In order to make it a perfect square, we have to multiply it by 1, 10 at least, times possibly some other perfect squares. If k equals 1, obviously, this is going to work. If k equals 0, this is going to work, so on and so forth. Now, once you realize this, we want to find an upper bound for k. And we can do that by considering the following. If you go to the uh, equation where we isolated the square root of y, notice that square root of y is equal to the square root of 250 minus the square root of x. Obviously, square root of y is greater than or equal to 0 all the time, which means this expression is equal to greater than or equal to 0, which means the square root of x is less than or equal to the square root of 250, right? And how do we uh, simplify this? Well, I'd like to replace uh, x with 10k squared and square both sides, so we're going to get x is less than or equal to 250, and now I'm going to replace x with 10k squared and divide both sides by 10. And this is going to be the result, right? Okay, k squared needs to be less than or equal to 25. But obviously, uh, if k is positive or negative, it doesn't really matter because notice that x is equal to 10k squared. So even if k is negative, we're going to square it to find x, so it doesn't really matter. Let's just consider the positive values, including 0, of course. So k can be you know, it's going to be between negative 5 and 5, but again, the negative values don't really matter here. So I can safely say that I can replace k with 0, I can replace k with 1, I can replace k with 2, 3, 4, and 5. So this is basically going to give us six solutions, right, as ordered pairs. Let's go ahead and find each one. Now, we said that x is equal to 10k squared. So you're supposed to square the k and multiply by 10. That's going to give you the value of x. Now, here's a question. How do you find the value of y? Well, this is what you need to consider. The square root of x and the square root of y add up to 250. Either you're going to use that original equation. After finding x, you have to square root it and subtract from the square root of 250 and then square the result. But anyways, no matter how you do it, or you're going to use the modified equation when you replace, you know, uh, 10x with, um, I'm sorry, x with 10k squared. Let's see what happens here. For example, if you do the math here, you're going to be getting 250 plus 10k squared minus 10 times 100k squared, which is going to come out as 10k, right? 
So basically, this is going to be the y value, all right? So that's what you gotta do here. So if you go ahead and take that, for example, while finding our you know, uh, y values, we could definitely use that as an equation. But it shouldn't be too hard to find once you know that. And we know that x is equal to, x is equal to 10k squared, right? Awesome. So this also gives you kind of like a parametric solutions in terms of another variable. So if k is equal to zero, obviously, you're gonna get x equals zero. If k is equal to one, you're gonna get x equals 10. If k is equal to two, you're gonna get uh, x equals 40. If k is equal to three, then you're gonna get x equals 90. And then from here, you're gonna get x equals 160. And finally, you're gonna get x equals 250. And in this case, let's go ahead and find the y values. Like I said earlier, you know, those are easy to find. You can just go ahead and plug in the k values into the equation and find it directly, and they should not be too hard to find. But if x is zero, then y would be 250. If x equals 10, y would be 160, then it will be 90. So basically what they're gonna do is they're gonna switch around in this pattern. So they're just gonna go backwards from this list. So then it's gonna be 40, and then it's gonna be 10, and finally it's going to be zero. Okay, this basically concludes the first method. Now I'm gonna show you the second method of solving this equation which is kind of interesting, I think. It's always good to have multiple solutions, and here is the second method. Okay, the second method involves something kind of like more elementary, I guess. I don't know. We're not even square rooting both sides, but it just involves the fact that, okay, I can write the square root of 250 as five root 10, correct? Okay, here's my strategy then for this one. Since uh, the result, the sum of these uh, two radicals is equal to something times square root of 10, they themselves should be in that format. Why? Because if you add, add like a square root of five and the square root of two, they're not like terms, you can't even combine them. So this is my method or assumption or whatever you wanna call that. It's going to involve the following. X can be zero, obviously, okay? And in that case, uh, square root of five would be five root 10, okay? So I'm just gonna write it as square root and then what I'll do is I will square these values and then we'll get all the answers. So it's pretty much the same thing, okay? But here I'm finding the radicals. Okay, so the next value for, the possible value for x would be, I mean, the square root of x would be root 10. Then in that case, uh, square root of y needs to be four root 10. And then this can be two root 10 and this can be three root 10, or they can switch around and be like this or they can again switch around and be like this, or they can switch around and again be like this. So basically what happens is, uh, we get the same solutions from here, so I'm not gonna repeat those, right? Because they're gonna be exact same results, okay? So that would be our solutions basically, and this brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, take care, bye-bye.